All right. So waiting on the first to pop on. Once one comes on, I'm rolling. <laughs> we worry about everybody else later on. Let's see who I can get first. <clears throat> All right, there we go. We got Miss Coleman. So guess what? We rolling. All right, so the topic tonight is elite team site notebooks. Now, uh, welcome Mr. White and Miss Coleman. Uh, this is, I have about maybe 35 of these little notebooks. I used to give them out to my team uh, when they got started in the business with me and, you know, ask them to take notes and put it in there. So, but this was my, uh, I had a bunch of these that I took notes at every event and any place I went also. So today I was just going through my closet and pull some of these out and I started flipping through them. I'm like, wow. So let's talk about them. Now, a lot of these notes, I don't know where they came from. I don't know who was speaking because a lot of times it doesn't have them, well, didn't have information on there. It could have been me just writing in a notebook. It could have been me at an event just taking notes. So let's just play with this for a minute and uh, see what comes from it. I'm just gonna flip through here and see some of the stuff that uh i'm gonna literally read and talk about okay so one page says it talks it talks about uh well at least it says here jealousy or envy so i'm reading strictly what the notes say i don't know again if i wrote these notes if i was sitting at somebody event and, and took the notes down but here it goes so jealousy is simply and clearly the fear that you do not have value. Jealousy is simply and clearly the fear that you do not have value. Jealousy scans for evidence to prove the point that others will be preferred and rewarded more than you. There is only one alternative and that's self value. If you cannot love yourself, you will not believe that you are loved. So if you cannot love yourself, you will not believe that you are loved. If you cannot love yourself, you will not believe that you are loved. Self-value is so important. You will always think it's luck that you have. You will always think that it's some kind of mistake that happened if you don't have self-value and you don't love yourself. And you have to learn to do that. Um, because if not, jealousy is always going to be there. Uh, envy is always going to be there. So it says, take your eyes off others and turn the scanner within you. Feed the seeds of jealousy. Clear those old voices from within. Feed the seeds of jealousy and clear those old voices that is within. Put all enemy into the building of your personal and emotional security. I'm sorry. Put all energy into the building of your personal and emotional security. Then you will be one. See, I can't even understand my hand right now. So I'm saying. So then you will be the one, okay, then you will be the one that others envy and you can remember, now I really can't, because you know, when I'm writing, I'm just uh, just scratch scratch. What would you call it? Chicken scratch. But the point is to value yourself. You have to build value within you. 
You have to, because if not, you're going to always think that you got lucky. And, and luck plays a, a, a part in anything we do. Luck plays a part in anything that we do, especially when you have success. Now, you know, the word luck, you know, people, you know, okay, luck is when you prepared. When you're prepared enough to have success in life, then people, you know, they call that luck. But that comes with being prepared. And some of it comes with just the right, being there at the right time. And I believe having the right contacts. All of that comes kind of in play. But that comes from you wanting to build value within yourself and not letting people make you feel like that you're not a value. That's the worst thing in the world, too, is to be around people that may be the leader of a certain organization uh, that people look up to. You bring tons of value to the table, but that person disrespects you and don't give you that credit. And so people are looking for that person to edify you, and they're not doing it. That's the worst thing in the world. You have to get away from that organization. You can build your own edification. But a lot of times, you know, it's like being a part of, um, let's say, Apple. Or being a part of Microsoft when Bill Gates was there. And you doing well, but Bill Gates never gives you the credit. Bill Gates never talks about you. Bill Gates never edifies you, even though, you know, you're working hard and people say, well, you can get your own. Well, a lot of times when you are organizations like that or you around situations like that, you need to have, I mean, I, I believe to this day, creativity is cool. You need creativity. But a lot of it is contacts. A lot of it is uh, timing and a lot of those things. But building that self-esteem and building that value is so important. Um, all right, so let me flip through. This is the elite team notes. Let me flip to something else in here. Aha. Now, this one has the speaker. I don't know if y'all know this guy, but his name is Brian Bean. You need to check him out. Go to his social media sites. Um, he's on Facebook. He's on Instagram. He's, I don't know if he's on TikTok or not, but his name is Brian Bean, B-E-E-N-E. I've been knowing Brian quite a while. So these notes was taken from a training that Brian was doing because it has his name on here. And some of the things that he talked about in here was uh, starting a business is not really for you. It's for the person that you are becoming. That's powerful. Starting a business is not really for you. It's for that person that you're building up for the future. It's the person that you want to become. And as you work on that um, and building your business, that's what it's really about. Because, you know, I always say that uh, uh, you know, the business is really, you know, you, you build people up besides yourself and then the people will build any business. So the same thing of you building your own self up for the future is for you, uh, the person that you are about to become and the person that you, uh, the person that you're visualizing yourself to be. All right, he also talked about Always remember and prepare like you're starving. Even when you're winning, even when you're succeeding, you got to always prepare and operate like you're starving. You know, like on one of the songs on Jay-Z album, he had Biggie and the intro that says, always prepare like you're an intern. Always operate like it's day one. Create your create everything that you do like it's day one. I keep the cameras right here. I don't know why I'm looking into my laptop, but I'm 
the camera, <laughs> talk to the camera here, but always operate like you're an intern, like this is day one. Everything that you're doing, keep that same hunger. And I'm I'm a, I'm admit this that I kind of lost some of my hunger uh, at one point um, as the dough was rolling in. I got complacent. I got comfortable. I didn't keep that same hunger. And you have to always keep that same hunger, especially now, because we're dealing in a world of um, international competition. You know, back in the day before social media, before the internet, your competition was, you know, always been you, but the people in your area, the people that you surrounded yourself with. That's what, but now, your competition can be from, it could be somebody in Russia selling something to your neighbor next door to you. Before, that person in Russia didn't even know who, didn't know who you were or neighbor, but now they can get on the World Wide Web and they can sell something. So competition now is, <laughs> you know, like great, being great is like being good. So it doesn't, great doesn't mean great anymore. It's like being good because it's so much, you have to be um, super great. Great to the highest greaticity. You have to be <laughs> great to the 10th power because there's other people out here that's fighting for your same position for the same amount of money you want and and the World Wide Web can reach them. And just like you can reach people now from in other countries and other places and just say other cities. Because I remember at one point, you know, I mean, think about it. I know we don't really, I mean, a lot of us probably forgot about this, but you remember in the 90s, it was no cell phone, no internet, no social media. No podcast, no, it was, you had the little colorful beepers, you know, the pages. Well, you had to stop at the pay phone to call. But if you wanted to meet people, like I grew up in sales that way, it was door to door. It was getting in your car and driving to meet somebody. It was going to, like for me, to the highest building downtown, I mean, to the tallest building downtown, go to the top and work your way down, cold calling, knocking on doors, going in each door. And then hot, trying to keep security from, from being on you because they telling you, you can't be in there doing that anyway. I can't forget, what was the term, what was the word they used for uh, no, not loitering, but no, uh, Somebody help me out in the chat. Let me see. What's the term call? Ms. Wiseman having phone issues. What's the term call? No soliciting. There you go. No soliciting. And I, you know, I had to build relationships with the security guards and the guys around the building. I'm like, man, you know, I got to make a living, bro. I got to get in here. You can't block me from getting in here. I mean, you can, but don't do that. Because that was then, you know, now you can touch people without even leaving your house. I don't really know in sales, um, traditional business sales, how they really doing it now. I'd be interested to find that out. I mean, how you, are people still seriously cold calling, going door to door, or is everybody online and everybody using the phone, um, because I remember the days where you just got up every day and 10 o'clock, you was in one of those buildings and you just cold call for the rest of the day. But so Brian, uh, some of the other notes that Brian has uh, here is that uh, Are you in it for the fortune or the fame? 
Now, I don't, I can't remember exactly how he related that in the message. Uh, are you in it for the dollars or just to be recognized? And a lot of people are in it for the fame. A lot of people are in it for the edification. A lot, you know how they say, uh, baby cry, babies cry for it and grown men die for it. That's that fame that you get from uh, being out, just say on social media now, somebody liking your stuff or somebody, you know, you people are in it for that more than even the money. They want to feel like somebody likes them. They want to feel like somebody, uh, I guess, believes in them or likes the, or, you know, believe in the thoughts that they have. And the fame can be really detrimental to a person's uh, life and business if that's what you're looking for. Because a lot of times that fame that you're looking for, you're not going to get early. You got to keep digging and keep digging and keep doing what you do before somebody comes around and starts saying they like what you're doing. And I'm not talking about, they got to, you got to be doing that for a while because if you in it for that and see, you got to really be in it. If you're in business, in my opinion, for the money, because that's, what's going to keep you going. If you're like, man, I don't really care about that part. I just need to figure out how I'm going to get this dough. Um, and so you got to keep grinding uh, to do that. But some people are in it just for the fame, man. They just want, um, want you talking about them. They want you to say some good stuff about them. Um, and that's why a lot of times when they don't get that and people don't get that and you don't get it in the comments, you don't get, you know, people get discouraged. They get discouraged when I, you know, I'm saying this, you can't look at it that way. You got to look at <laughs> that. Your, your goal and your strategy is to get whatever amount of money that you want. And you can't let not having the fame discourage you or slow you down from doing what you supposed to be doing. All right. So let me flip through some more. These are, man, I got so much stuff in here. Uh, Let's see here. Always be professional. Now, <laughs> professional might have changed over the years. Because in my mind, always being professional is watch your language. And now it's almost like if you don't use that language, you're not going to get. Most of the people I see out here, a lot of people I see that are having uh, success in business, you know, the language they use is just really, you know, at one point you would never use that language. Like right now, I'm not saying I don't use it, but it's hard for me to use it publicly. It's hard for me to get on here and just say some of the words that you hear coming out of people. But a lot of folks do that. And it's like, it's almost like that's what's relatable to people. Somebody says, well, you're not being you, but no, that's not true. I mean, you know, you was, I was trained to never, so now it's changed. So now you can just get on here and say the most foul stuff in the world and people, you know, that's cool. It's just in me not to do that. Not say I, not saying I don't use that foul language, but it's hard for me to do it on the microphone. It's hard for me to do it when somebody is videoing me. And, and it seems like that's what the time you need to do it now. Because the person who can get on here, talk business, and say the most foul stuff out of their mouth, hey, that person like me, man. They cool. You know? <laughs> and it seems like if you don't say it and you don't use that language, people bring up the old word that, you know, has made a comeback now, corny. You know how words make a comeback? You know, because corny was being used years ago. 
just like uh, how people use the term bread now for money. I mean, bread was used in the 70s in the, in the uh, black, <laughs> in the black movies when, you know, <laughs> man, we need some bread, man. So now that word now is used like all words come back around. But the language I'm telling you is that, you know, for me, being professional is not using it. But in this world today, a lot of people use it and throw it around like it's nothing. You know, that's just a part of uh, why are some people so cutthroat in business? Maybe it's just my experience. Well, I think what it is, is just business is business and personal life is personal life. And I think business just in general is cutthroat. I don't think, I think business is just, you know, it's what it is. It's about getting the money. So I think on one of the other talks I was doing, I talked about how this guy had, um, decided to sue me. He put his he put his his lawyers on me, sued me for a year or two. I'm fighting the case. You know, I got a lawyer out of L.A. who I met online, and so I'm paying him every month just to keep me from having to shut down my business. But this same guy started a new company and didn't have a problem at all calling me. Tony. Literally calling me to be in business with him after he had <laughs> put his big dog attorneys on me. That's business. See, a lot of people don't look at it like that. A lot of people think, you know, uh, yeah, you know, and I'm th I'm saying business is business. Cutthroat and all. Personal life is something totally different. I think a lot of us want the per personal life to be, our personal life to be like our business life. And the people who think that way, I, I feel like they don't get far doing it that way. The person who understands that there's a difference where you compartmentalize business personal life but a lot of people want to run that together because business is what it is you know but <laughs> we want to we want to be friends and partners and a lot of times that's not how it works like the guy who called me after suing me for two years three years he didn't have a problem and it it amazed me because i was just sitting there listening to him and thinking what I learned about business growing up is not what business is. What he's calling me is business. Because guess what? If that opportunity that he was offering me could make me some money and I could change my life financially, most people who are business people will put the other stuff to the side and say, okay, let's do business. I ain't got to like you. You know how uh, I was saying that uh, hauling oats, what is it? Uh, one of them is suing the other one. And they are still doing concerts, live concerts, traveling around the world. And one of your partners is suing you for uh, something doing, dealing with the music. But you still get on stage together. You're still business partners. Or you still do business together, not business partners. Hey, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I think a lot of us kind of became business people. We're not really understanding how business really works. And it's cutthroat. It's just, it's all about business. It's not personal. You know what I say? It's business, not personal. But we want business to be personal. Just business. That's what it is. Just business. All right, let's flip through one more. Uh, so many notes in here, man. I, like I said, I got 25 of these too.
This is something I talk about all the time too. Keep your goals. You know, it almost seems as the word corny when you're talking to people, if you mention dreams, because most people don't have dreams anymore. Most people don't even, can't even, they're not even dreaming about a bigger world, a bigger life for them. They don't. They might have a few goals, but they're not dreaming. So when you say, you know, keep your goals and your dreams in front of you, it almost seems like, cause people don't, most folks are not dreaming. They don't have any big goals and dreams that they're shooting for. But the person who wins, they keep those dreams and goals in front of them to the end. I remember this guy talking about that he was building a business and somebody laughed at him. He said, man, I would be on my deathbed pitching my business to the nurse just because. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> When somebody disrespects me like that, like some people need that. You know, I always talk about you got to be frustrated and dissatisfied with your situations. But a lot of times when you talk to people now, there's no goals, there's no dreams. They feel like, you know, that time has passed. And, um, and I'm like, man, as long as you live it, as long as you breathe it, as long as you you getting up every morning, I would rather get up every morning believing in something that might be that might sound so crazy to people. Believing in a goal and a dream that might sound so crazy than just getting up and not believing in anything bigger than what I'm shooting for now. Not not believing in just going through the daily routine, you know, being a part of the status quo. I, I, I'd rather have you laughing at me and talking about me and saying you crazy, man. For I would rather get up fighting for something like that every single day than to just get up and, you know, go through the, the things that the status quo does. You know what I'm saying? The same old things. I, I you know. All right, so tonight, that's, that's when we'll stop right here with this. Uh, Kendra, do you think culture has to do with it since life is better in U.S. than other parts of the world. When you say culture, are you talking about black, white culture? Or are you talking about the culture of the West, which is, you know, the United States, the Western culture? Is that what you're talking about? The West, okay. Um, well, yeah, because, I mean, we are, we are the definition of capitalism. So, you know, a lot of a lot of countries are, you know, so they did they have communism, they got socialism. Uh capitalism is, you know, is a part of the West culture. So and capitalism is, you know. <laughs> well, I used to hear uh part of my to say is the can theory. <laughs> get all you can, can all you get, and sit on the can. Don't let nobody get, get all you can, can all you get, and sit on the can and let nobody come get any of that. It's the can theory. So, yeah, I, I guess, you know, being in the West, Western culture uh, has us uh, thinking that way, but that's just that's how it is. It's life. Life for us. Life for us. So. Hey, man, look, I appreciate all of you all getting on here tonight. And also, I appreciate you guys leaving comments and uh, even asking questions, man. It's good to be on here because, you know, this is kind of stuff I talk about regardless. You know, I, they, they say, uh, get up and do something that you love, whether you're getting paid for it or not. That's a good question, though. What would you all do? Somebody put in the comments. What would you do? Let's say you, let's just say, hypothetically, you've been offered $20 million. But in order for you to get $20 million or get paid from the $20 million, 
you have to get up every day for at least seven or eight hours doing something that you love to do, what would that be? What would that be? Somebody put it, put it in the chat before I leave. What would you do? Let's just say you're doing it for free because you're going to get the 20 million if you just do it. But if you, if you could do something for free and live the life that you want to live, what would that be every day? Homeschool consulting. Now, I don't know. That's big words, homeschool consulting. What does that mean? Teaching, you know, homeschool teaching kids? or uh, What do you mean? Teaching God's word Bible study. Okay. So you would get up every day and teach Bible study. Okay. Yes, how to get started with homeschool. No, you got to give me more than that, Ms. Wiseman. You got the right name, Wiseman. Come on, give me give me something better so I can understand and be successful. Um, being successful doing homeschool consulting. Yeah, we have to talk about that one because I, I don't I don't know how you. I'm not a fan of public school. Neither am I, but I still don't understand. <laughs> I still don't understand being successful doing. So homeschool consulting. So I'm just thinking you saying homeschool teaching. How would you do that? I mean, how would you, five people? I mean, what do you, how would you do that? How would you, so you're saying get up every day and, and have five people in your house? And you're going to teach them. What are you teaching them? Because when you homeschool, and that's another question, how, how do you fit in the system? Because you got to still be in the system. How, how can a person go to school and say, I was homeschooled. But once I guess once you start being homeschooled, you got to go homeschool all the way out. You can't homeschool somebody for like eight years and then they go apply to Harvard and they say, I've been homeschooled. How does that work? So homeschooling, you can't apply ever to any other school, right? So, so when you homeschool, that means that that person has to wind up being their own business and they're not dealing with anything within the system because if you go, if you homeschool, you put that on your resume so you can't even have a resume in. You just, you just, because I'm trying to understand. You just, now you just an independent. That's what I'm talking about. No, 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 no. That's what I'm talking about. I don't, I don't. We have to talk about that, Ms. Wiseman, because if anybody else know what she's talking about, maybe you have to come put in the comment section to help me out because I don't get it. I understand homeschooling. I understand when she says a consultant of homeschooling, but how do you how how do you take homeschooling to another? I mean, what happens then? Because I got a I got a, a my mentor whose past name was Ty Best. He homeschooled his two kids. But guess what? They never went to any school after that. He had a business that they made money from his business, and that's how they lived off of that. So they never went to a job. They never... So if you homeschooling somebody... My son was homeschooled and attended college. How did he attend college if he was homeschooled? What did he put down? I went to the school of Ms. Wiseman. I, I mean, how do you, how do you go into college? We have to talk about it, definitely. Because 
I'm just trying to figure out if you homeschool, is there a degree for homeschooling? Do you say, oh, I, I went to homeschool. I went to, I went to homeschool. So now I want a job because I went to homeschool or now I want to enter college because I went to homeschool. Or is it that once you homeschool, you can't really do anything else but be an independent business owner? Or how do you go from that? You have a transcript. Okay. That's not true. Okay. So you went to, your son went to the homeschool of the wise men. And what did you teach him? Did you homeschool him on George Washington chopped down a cherry tree and Abe Lincoln walked 25 miles to return a quarter? Um, or, you know, Christopher Columbus discovered America. Did you homeschool him on that? Did, so did he learn that part? Or he learned what you wanted to teach him? The same thing that's taught in school. But don't you have to have credentials to teach that? Don't you have to have a license to say, I'm going to teach the same thing? You, you, you can be a teacher without having any of that? All she wrote. <laughs> Pen and the pencil broke. We'll see you guys later. I appreciate that, Ms. Wiseman. We got to get that conversation going. And I'll talk to you guys later.